everybody, it's me Stacy here at Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com and this is our next Saturday with Stacy YouTube class number 541 and I am very honored to do this class. I am I am thrilled to be featuring one of the nicest people you will ever meet ever. I have product from Eileen Hull and she is a Sizzix licensed designer but what she does is so special and so unique and she is so humble about her talent that it is just a joy to be able to bring you her product and show you my take on it. So I have, I have beautiful things to show you. You wait till the samples. If you think the samples are normally good, these are beyond what I can even comprehend. We had designers from all over the world send us samples for Eileen. She has her own, she has her own peeps who make stunning things with her scoreboard dies. And I can't wait to share them with you. But of course, I'm gonna stacy them just a wee bit. Hey, Eileen. <laughs> hey, girl, hey. <laughs> Now, before we get started in all the fun, and today is a technique-based class, so if you need to grab a piece of paper and a pencil, even if it's just to write down this YouTube number, I suggest you grab a piece of paper and a pencil. I am going to put my pause face on. That way, if you pause me to do that, I'm not going to have my eyes half closed or have some weird expression on my face. Are you ready? Okay, pause me. This is my pause face. See, I'm not gonna blink. Okay, we're back. <laughs> so hopefully you had enough time to go grab whatever you need to grab because this is a technique-based class. I will be making nothing. You don't need me to make anything when you see the samples, but I am gonna show you how to use the product so that you have the confidence to try this and to explore with it. And we're gonna do something a little different with it that, well, well, we're just gonna do it. <laughs> Better to ask forgiveness than permission. And I can just see, ta-da, ta-da, it's Taylor and oh so clever Karina. They're probably watching or they will be watching. They're like, now what? <laughs> oh my gosh, now what? So it is, it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. Hello girls. <laughs> you know I had to stacify it somehow, right? So that's what we're going to do. Now before I get started, I do have winner winner chicken dinner to announce. These two lovely ladies, hello lovely ladies, they posted a comment below and knock to the side if you're watching the live chat comments in the live chat don't count so you have to post a comment below and then sms guy james will approve it a little bit later on in the week so he gets rid of all the spam and all the junk and and haters gonna hate so he gets rid of all of that and once your comment is approved you go into the running to be a winner winner chicken dinner and receive a 25 dollars gift card Yay! I got the most lovely little note today from a winner winner chicken dinner. I won't say her name, but she she does classes, I believe, with the disabled and she buys or the or the disadvantaged and she buys all the products herself. And so she won $25 and she splurged. She bought something just for herself. And that made my heart so happy and her card was so lovely. So she was just sent a little thank you for the $25. So these two lovely ladies have received $25 because they posted below. Their comment was kind. That's all it has to be is kind. And now they've got $25. So our first winner winner is Wanda Harris. Hello, Wanda Harris, how are you doing? Winner, winner, chicken dinner, you are. Hello, yay. Our second winner, winner is Lori, Lori Sanford. Hello, Lori Sanford, is that you? Congratulations, wahoo kachu for you. You are a winner, winner, chicken dinner. So Wanda and Lori, you know the drill. 
I forgot it once. We had to, I stopped the YouTube to go back to do it, <laughs> but we're not gonna forget it today. We have the winner, winner chicken dinner dance. So sit up straight, sit up straight, square your shoulders and, and then get into the groove of it because it really is kind of a groove. Are you ready? You're a winner, chicken dinner. You're a winner, chicken dinner. Wahoo, cut you for you. Congratulations to the both of you. Your $25 is already in your online account. Either splurge on yourself or pick up something practical, whatever makes your heart happy from me to you. Congratulations and enjoy. Now we are like this close to 800,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. That just is beyond what I can even, my, my brain can't even fathom 800,000 people. So <laughs> it just can't. So <laughs> when we hit 800,000 people, we will be giving away $800 worth of gift cards. And I will announce it and let you know what you need to post. And I would assume it will be by next the next YouTube. I'm pretty sure it will be hitting it by the next YouTube. So stay tuned because $800 worth of gift cards given away is definitely a wahoo ka -choo. Now, if you are a local peep who sees Mr. SMS walking around with Ellie, if he takes her out for a walk, do not mention this to him. He needs to know nothing about it. <laughs> this is between us <laughs> and not us and him. <laughs> He's on a need to know basis what I do. And well, <laughs> he doesn't need to know. Now today, today is all about Eileen Hull. And I'll tell you, I've known Eileen for a long time because I've been a, a, a Sizzix customer for a long, long time. And we've always just kind of passed in the, you know, passed kind of ships passing in the night. We would say hello and chit chat for a little bit, but I've never really gotten to know Eileen over the years. And now that I'm a Sizzix licensed designer as well, I've had the opportunity to spend a whole lot more time with her. Let me tell you, it was my loss that I didn't get to know her better sooner. Truly, my loss. If I would have known that I was missing out on such a good friend, I would have never missed out. So, I am just thrilled to death to bring you her product. It is her latest collection, her newest launches, and they are very specialized to Eileen. She has, she has a, a type of style that in dimensional, dimensional items that really she's, there's nobody else like her. There's nobody else in her lane. There's nobody else who can do what she does. So I have her latest collection. I have it in a bundle. I have it open stock too but I do have it in the bundle. It is a large bundle and Ellison has helped us ship it because it's big. <laughs> We're shipping it from here, but they provided the boxes. Thank you, Tada. It's Taylor and oh so clever Karina. I appreciate you for that. The regular price of her first bundle, and this is the newest product, it's $158.94. I know, eat, but wait till you see what it does. We have it for $109.99. That's the SMS price in a bundle. Yes, you can get just open stock, absolutely. But then I have two additional bundles from Eileen of some of her older product. And one of those bundles is $24.99 and the other one is $34.99. So I'm hoping that there's, there's a little bit of Eileen here for everybody, because if you were going to support somebody just because they're a good person, she's a good person to support. Now, 
I'm going to be taking this class in a slightly different direction. Hello, I'm Stacy, <laughs> And I would rather ask forgiveness than permission. Hello, Tada, and oh, so clever. <laughs> That's Taylor and Karina. And so hopefully when they see where I take this class, they're going to be like, oh, that's awesome versus did she just do that? <laughs> We're going to have to wait and see. I think they're probably in the live chat. Hi, girls. <laughs> and again, it's all about using what you have to make the most out of it and really exploring the opportunities that a product provides you. Sometimes we look at a product and we see just what the manufacturer expected us to see. And sometimes we look at a product and we see more. Well, today I'm gonna, I'm looking at a product and it's not so much that I see more, but I see a way to use it that maybe it hadn't been used like this before. So I'm gonna tilt on down I'm going to get started for today. I am all about the technique. I'm not gonna be making anything pretty at the end because the samples I have for, from Eileen and her makers, they're, they've been shipped globally here. I've got samples from people all over the world who follow Eileen and are part of her team. And I wanna give a big shout out to all of them. I will not be able to say all of your names. I'm not, I'm not gonna be able to look at each item and call out everybody's name, but a collective thank you for all of your efforts and the beautiful makes you sent us to show off. It sounds exciting, right? If you think our samples are great to begin with, these are, they take your breath away, truly. So I'm gonna tilt down. We're gonna get started for today. I have got fun planned for you and a little bit of, did she just do that? Oh yes, she did. <laughs> See, I love being scrapbooking made simple, Stacy. <laughs> I am so much freer to do anything I want. Sizzix Stacy, when I, as licensed designer, Stacy kinda has to play within some of the rules, but even then she walks a line. But scrapbooking made simple, Stacy, voila. <laughs> All right, let's get started for today. It's good to see everybody. Let me zoom on in. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I will let you know next week I will be here for the YouTube, but then I am catching a plane off to the United Kingdom immediately following. Look at this. Isn't this beautiful? So this is using Eileen's new embossing folder. It's so lovely. So, so lovely. And here, this is using one of Eileen's new dies. Love how they stitched it. This is Mila. Oh my gosh, girlfriend, you rocked this. It's beautiful. She stitched it so the die cuts all, it's like a postage stamp. I think that's, it's called, hello, what are you called? You are called faux postage. But then, look at this card done with the same die. Holy smokes, totally different looks, completely different. I, I love it all. I love how this one, we they cut the edges off to give the postage edge all the way around. I love the stitching. I love all the, the hearts and the valentines. Same die, two completely different looks. And then we're going to be working with Eileen's scoreboards today. Oh, hello. Can you even imagine? Is this gorgeous? This is by Britt. Hello, Britt. How are you doing? And when you open it up, she has filled it with lovely little journals. And I'm going to show you those as well. Look at how cute is this. This is just darling. Look at how cute, all inked and pretty. This is just a phenomenal little, little box of happiness. 
so I think I'm going to start by talking about Eileen's dies a little bit. I think that that's probably the most important place to start. Let me get this one in there. There we go. There we go. I needed to close it up. I think that's probably a good place to start is with her dies. So the one that the one that did the postage is right here and this is a thin lit die. It's lovely. It's oversized. It's got a frame. It's got the main die. Fabulous. She's got a new 3D embossing folder that is big. Hello. It's like almost A5. It is A5 size. That's the size of one of my stamp sets. Oh, I like big. I do because you can always cut down, but it's hard to make it bigger. Then she has scoreboard dies. So this is one of her scoreboard dies and it makes that cute little the cutest little journal the cutest little notebook isn't that just absolutely darling and what are they calling it mini book okay i'll go with it it's mini book and then the other die we're going to be working with today oh don't fall please thank you no 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 okay <laughs> crisis averted is her XL scoreboard die. Now we typically do not sell XL dies because of the shipping, but Sizzix has come through for us. They helped us source the right size boxes and get it down so that we can ship her scoreboard dies. So both of these items are scoreboards. And the bundle actually includes both of those dies, the box and the little the little mini and the faux postage and the 3D embossing, but it also includes her mat board and a set of extended cutting pads. So now you can see why it retails for over hundred and almost $160 because you're getting the extended cutting pads, you're getting the mat board, you're getting two scoreboard dies, you're getting a 3D embossing folder, you're getting her, her thin lit die. It is quite, quite the package for sure. I'm going to start with looking at the dies themselves. I think that's probably the best place to start. And I'm going to compare them to her thin lit. So this is a type of die that we use all the time. It is called a chemically etched die. It is a wafer die. They are super thin. And the tape is really strong. I just want this one, thank you. <laughs> so it's a wafer die. And they call it a wafer die well because you can see it's wafer thin. It's a chemically etched die. It's meant to cut paper. It can cut fun foam and maybe some fabrics, but the detail on this, you know, it might be a little bit of a challenge. It is definitely not meant to cut anything heavy, not leather or flashing or mat board, anything that is thicker because there is no blade on this. This is a, a chemically etched die and there's no blade, which means you can't hurt yourself on this die at all. It's just easy peasy. These dies are her scoreboard dies. And you can see that there is a big difference between a wafer die and a scoreboard die. See how thick this is? versus a wafer die. That's because this die is called a steel rule die. S-T-E-E-L-R-U-L-E, -E -E, steel rule die. And there are blades, there is a blade that goes all the way around the design. Steel rule dies typically are a more simplistic pattern because somebody, a person, has to form the blade 
around the design by hand. They're not machine made. These are done by hand, which means the labor on them is a lot. Now, if there, there's enough padding on the top that you're not going to ever feel that blade. You're not going to want to have it on the floor and step on it, but you're never going to feel that blade. There's enough, they've put enough padding on the top that when the pressure from the machine pushes down, that's when the blade comes out and pushes the paper. You are not going to have enough force to, to get in there to do that. So she has two new steel rule dies. These are not her only steel rule dies, her whole line of scoreboard dies, and that's what she calls them, scoreboard dies, are steel rule. This, this die is extra long. Look at it, it's, it's twice as big as a normal Biggs die, B-I-G-Z, Biggs, and they call this an XL Biggs. It is long. Yes, it will go through your Big Shot machine, your Big Kick machine, your Vagabond machine, your Big Shot Plus, your Big Shot Pro, your Switch, your Fold Away. You name the machine, it's going to go through, except for a Sidekick or that little, that little purse that did embossing old only. Will these go through a Cuddle Bug machine? No, they are too wide too wide to go through a cuddle bug machine. Can you put them through a platinum or a platinum six machine? Yes, absolutely they will go through. Now the the height of this or the depth of this is exactly the same as the platform that comes with your big shot machine that you need this to get through your steel rule or your chemically etched die because if you tried to put your chemically etched die through without this it would never hit the roller inside your machine because these are the same so when using a steel rule die you do not need your base platform if you put this on top and you sandwich it you put this down here and this up there and this over there and you try to put all of this through your machine you're not you, you you're not even going to get one plate underneath it's going to tell you it's just too big so when you're using a thicker die and there's lots of steel rule dies out there they still make bigs dies absolutely tim holtz had his whole alterations line many steel rule dies you just eliminate your base platform. And that's true for the big size or the XL big size. The only thing I'm going to need to get either of these through is the appropriate size cutting plates. So here I've got my normal size cutting plates. And here, I have my XL cutting plates. Now remember, we're including the cutting pads in the bundle. So if you already have a set, well now you've got another set because the value is so great. And if you don't have a set, well we're going to take care of that for you so you do. Her dies are very unique. They tend to be dimensional. Her scoreboard dies are dimensional. So when we play with them, we use something called mat board. Love the mat board. It is a thick piece of, oh gosh, I can't get this to stay up there. Holy smokes. Hold please. There we go. Let's see if it stays. Mat board. It is. It is not foam core. It's not foam core. It's thicker than poster board. You get six sheets of it. And what it does is it allows you to take your scoreboard die and die cut it with the score lines staying in. 
So on my little guy here, this is going to cut all the way around, but in the center they've added score lines. And those score lines are not meant to cut. It's meant to score into. So can I use this with just paper? Yes, absolutely I can. You may want to use a crease pad if you're using just paper with this so those score lines don't cut all the way through. Can I use this with my switch machine or my plus machine? Yes, you can, but the pressure on those machines is a little bit different. And pending die to die, scoreboard die to scoreboard die, this may go through without a crease pad and not cut those lines. Whereas my larger box die, I might send it through without the crease pad and it will just cut everything, even the score lines. You're going to have to try. A crease pad was invented so that where those score lines are when you put it through your machine, it only scores and not cuts. But because we're using mat board today, I don't have to worry about that at all. Now there's six sheets of mat board in here. And yes, we have it available. It comes in your bundle. You get one in the bundle, so you get six sheets in your bundle. But I have a feeling you may want more. It is meant to be the size of the largest die. So that you can just put it right on top. Put your plate over the top of it and send it through and cut. But if I need it smaller to cut one of my smaller scoreboards, I can take my scissors and cut right through it. Absolutely. And it's you're going to get at least two of these out of one piece of map board and then you'll probably have a little piece left over to do something else with. So I think I'm going to cut this one first and show you what it does. Let's take my mat board and I'm going to cut a piece. My scissors aren't very long so I'm going to come from both sides. And you can see it's thick. It's, it's a thick material. So you can imagine if I was trying to cut with a wafer style die or a chemically etched die and I was trying to cut something this thick, it wouldn't be possible because there's, there's nothing here thick enough to cut all the way through. It just won't work. But because this has an actual blade around everything. When I put it together and send it on through, it cuts beautifully. So when I cut a steel rule die, I typically cut face up. So here's my do not cut plate. Here's my die. Here's my mat board. Here's my cut plate. When I cut a chemically etched or a wafer die, I typically do it the other direction. Here's my cut plate. This would be my paper because I wouldn't be able to use mat board. Here's my die. Here's my other cut plate. So you just have to decide which works best for you. Typically when I cut a steel rule, I cut facing up. So my do not cut plate, my cut plate that I try not to cut into to keep it as straight as possible as opposed to my cut plate which has got I mean, it's, it's as warped as can be. It's got a big old bow in it. Perfectly fine. As long as I have my do not cut plate down on the bottom, it kind of helps feed into my machine easier. If both my plates are warped, I have to like tuck it in underneath when I'm putting it through the opening of my Big Shot machine. Now I'm gonna bring over my Big Shot machine and I'm just gonna sit it right on through. And let me go back just a little bit. And I'm going to cut. Now it's not a difficult roll at all. 
Done. Easy peasy. If you wanted to cut cardstock, you could probably cut, I don't know, six, seven, eight sheets of cardstock at one time. Because I think about how thick this is, and you can easily have eight sheets of cards cardstock and it'll cut through. So I've made my little book. And you can see it's got the score lines right there. It didn't cut through, so I can fold here and fold here if I want the little gusset. It has the cute little oop, the cute little detail on the top that you can add grommets to and then a little label for the front. And this is her little mini book and it's darling. So this is what it starts out as. But this, this is what you can take it to. Look at how fun this is. And they're just so cute. Wait till you see all of the amazing samples. Look at how beautiful. Oh, you guys, these are just beautiful. All the papers. And they did the paper with, it looks like with just, with poking holes and putting, putting twine through it to make their paper. Same thing, darling. Very, very easy to do. Put it together, decorate. We'll come back to this in just a minute. I want to move to the big die. Hello. So I've got my big steel roll die now. Hello, it's big. Yes, let's go. Got my extended plates. You can't use your smaller plates. They just don't work. I know some people may do half and half, but still, it comes with the large plate, so it's best to use the right tool for the right project. Now, if I take a piece of mat board and I use it in my scoreboard die, I think the first thing I want you to know is that the mat board is almost the exact same size as the die. So the cut lines for this die are right here and right here. So there the cut lines are right on the right here on these two lines. The mat board is almost exactly that same size. So you almost line the bottom edge up with the mat board and run it through. You're not going to line it all the way up to the bottom because then you're going to miss this entire cut right here. You're going to miss it right there and you're not going to line it all the way up to the top because then you're going to miss this entire cut down here. So you're going to look at the bottom edge of that cut and you're going to line that mat board right up to it. And that way it covers both sides, top and bottom. And then I'm going to put my top plate on and I'm going to send it through. Again, if you were using a switch machine or a plus machine, you may want to substitute your top plate for an extended crease pad. That's going to allow those score lines to score and not cut. We're using a Big Shot today, so it's pretty easy peasy. Regular old Big Shot, tried and true. I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to send it on through. And it's not going to be a tough roll. It's going to roll through pretty seamlessly. A couple little creaks and cracks are okay. 
I'm not going to roll it back. It's a one roll. And now I have got the beginnings of my box. And can you see the score lines? How deep those score lines are put in there? See how deep those lines are? That's because of the map board. And the map board is so firm that it's going to give my box and my little mini book structure. This is not gonna fall apart. If you use paper, you're gonna probably wanna use a heavy double-sided paper, something that's gonna give it a little more structure, or of course you can always cover this with pretty paper, but if you're gonna give this as a gift and something that somebody may use, you wanna use the mat board because it gives it that structure and that rigidity that is going to hold everything and not just fall apart. So now I have got the beginnings of the making of my box. But to do a box, I have to cut two of everything. So I'm gonna grab, and I might save these. I don't know, maybe I can use this for something else somewhere down the road. I'm gonna grab another piece of my mat board. I'm gonna put it right on my Eileen hole scoreboard die. I'm gonna line it up to the bottom that bottom cut, not all the way to the bottom of my die. I'm gonna scooch it on up until I see that bottom cut and line it right up with that. I'm going to take my cut plate, put it right over the top. And I'm going to send it through again because I need two to make a box. I need double of everything. I will tell you, these are one of the easiest boxes I've ever put together. And that's where that's where Eileen comes in. And she's so clever and she's so smart <laughs> that she makes it simple and accessible and and she makes you look really really good. So, let me put this over to the side, and again, I'm gonna keep those. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them, but we'll see. So I've now cut two of everything for my, for my box. So I've got two here, two here, two here, and then this little piece you can either cut two of or you can cut four. And you're like, well, what's that little piece for? I'm gonna show you. So I'm gonna put this box together just as is. I'm not gonna do anything special to it. Just like I folded this one and didn't do anything special to it, I'm gonna put this box together just as is. And you're going to fold on all of your score lines. And you don't have to work hard at it. The die did all the work for you. You don't have to go get your scoring tool and rescore it. Nope, these are easy peasy. So I'm gonna fold on all my score lines. And the box almost puts itself together. So I have two of the same pieces here. Great. I've got two of the same pieces here. Perfect. I have two of these little pieces exactly i could use four if i want but i'm going to go with two and i'll show you why you can use two or four then i'm going to finish scoring folding on all my score lines one and two So that's as complicated as it gets. Now I just need some double-sided adhesive. Let's grab my double-sided adhesive and I'm going to start to put my box together. So here I've got a frame, a, a mitered edge and a frame and a frame. And if I put these two together, and I 
put the mitered edges together. Look at that. Ho, oh, could it be any easier? All I did was make sure that my frame edges, because on this side there is none. So if I did this and this, I would have it wrong. There'd be no way. I can't have the tabs on the same side and I need the I need the frames to be all together. So if you just put your mitered edges together, look at that. And all I need to do is take a little bit of Stacy tape or double-sided adhesive to tape them down. Now you may want to peel like the very top piece of this off your scoreboard. We're going to put the tape there. This is so smooth <laughs> that the tape sometimes is like, hmm, I'm not sure if I want to stick there or not. But if you pull just the top little piece off of each of your tabs that you're going to be taping down, or at least one side of them, the tape seems it has a little rougher surface to grab to and it seems to work better. So a little piece of tape. And a little piece of tape. Now Eileen is watching this and it makes me so nervous that she probably might be watching me going, no, that's not how I do it. <laughs> I'm just going for it, girl. <laughs> so my tape was a little bit big. I just folded it back over. And all I have to do is line it up on the inside. So I want my end here that doesn't have the tab to line up with my end here. And then I push my tab, done. If you have got, let's see, eight pieces of tape, I think it's eight, well, maybe it's a little bit more than eight pieces of tape, you can do this. So now I've got my tape there. Same thing, it's a little big, I'm just gonna fold it in on itself. I'm gonna close it up line it up and seal it up and bam just like that I've started the lid of my box now I'm gonna put that off to the side for a minute and we're gonna do the base of the box and the base of the box is no different than what we just did I want to see my my edges face up so this would not work because I've got an edge here but I've got no edges here and my tabs are not going to fit into each other properly. I need to have my all my four edges facing the same so I can do my mitered and see my square. So it's the same thing we just did here. The only difference is this is only this tall where this is the base of the box and it's a little bit taller. So it's the same, it's wash, rinse, and repeat. We're gonna add some tape to both of the tabs. I'm gonna pull off the top. If I can get it off just a little bit. There we go. Just because it's a little rougher and it gives my, my adhesive a little something to grab onto. Add my tape. Now you can use liquid glue, but then you're going to have to hold in place. I find that tape is a much better option than trying to use a liquid glue or even a glue gun. So top to top, and those are going to fit in just like that. 
So I'm ready to peel this one off. It's a little bit longer than it should be. I'm going to be fine with that because it's double-sided tape. So I can just fold it right back onto itself. top to top and marry these two up and seal it together. Just give a good press. So in reality this box takes about mm, maybe five minutes at the most to put together. Probably less if you make enough of them. Okay, so now I have a lid and I have a box. But you're like, wait a minute. Right now you've got big old empty. <laughs> yes, that is what these are for. So I'm going to tape this down and that's going to close up the bottom of my box. And I'm going to tape this down and that's going to close up the top of my box. And I'm going to put the tape right on those tabs. So it's 10 pieces of tape. If you can pull 10 pieces of tape, you can do this. So let's do that one and then Let's put on here. And then this side. And then this side. And then I pull all the liners off. You know what I forgot to do? I forgot to take the little top piece off to give that little extra roughness. Darn it. Well, we're just going to go for it. So far, so good. And where my tape is hanging over, I'm just going to fold it right back onto itself because you can. It's double-sided tape. So far, excellent. All right, now all I have to do is put the top on. Well, this is actually the bottom. See how rigid that is? See how strong that is? It is not flimsy at all. It is that matte board and Eileen's design that keeps it so rigid and so strong. Let's do the same for the lid. So one. Three. Oh, and I did the same thing. I forgot to do that. Darn it, Stacy. Were you yelling at me? You did it again. Oops, I did it again. And four. All right. Make sure they're down and then let's pull. And it's hanging over just a little bit. Can you see that my tape 
is just a little bit over so that all I have to do is roll it back in onto itself and it's fine. Roll it right on back into itself and it's fine. And then let's well, maybe I'll try from this side. See, this is there we go. It's a little bit over, so I'm just gonna roll it back in. And then last but not least. And again, this one's a little bit over. I made it a little bit long. So I'm just going to roll it back in onto itself. And now I can put my lid on. So now I have the box and I have the lid. But when you do this, you're going to find that the box and the lid are exactly the same size. Usually a lid kind of goes over the box so it closes it up. But these, these are exactly the same size and the lid, well the lid just kind of moves all over the place. But remember, do you remember there were these two little extra strips that you could either have two or four of? You add those into your lid on either side, or you could do all four sides if you wanted, or you could add them to your box on the inside. And what that is going to do is allow your box to close. So I'm just gonna put it on the inside and I just have it hanging out just a little bit. So I'm not putting it all the way down. That defeats the purpose. You need it to be just a little bit higher than the lip. You need a, you know, maybe half of it higher than the lip of your lid. Now this time I'm gonna try and remember to pull this. When we first got this and I was playing with it, I'm like, I don't get, what do these pieces do? Took me a little time to come to understand. Oh, have you ever seen a light bulb actually happen over somebody's head? Hello. So I don't like to be told how to do something. I wanna figure it out on my own. Oh, that was crooked. Crooked, crooked, crooked. Let's try that again. And I'm going to keep the tape all the way against one of the edges. I don't want to center the tape. I want to keep the tape closer to one of the edges. In fact, I might even have the tape come off of it a little bit so that I have half of it with tape and half of it not. So half of it with tape and half of it not. And remember, the tape is double-sided so I can just fold it right back into itself. So the tape, I'm just going to fold back into itself. No mess, no glue. Now I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to have half of it stick out and half of it taped down. There, I think that's good. And this way I don't have any tape showing this way. It's all taped in. And 
let's do this side. Let's peel that piece off and let's get this one done. And let me show you what happens by adding these to your box. So I'm going to hold it down so that only half of my piece of mat board is covered. Pull my liner off. There we go. Fold it back in onto itself because you can. Now I could use a thinner piece of Stacy tape, but I'm not going to go get one. And then half up so that whatever is showing sticking out doesn't have the Stacy tape. It's all down here so I can stick it together. Now I've added this little extra piece to my lid, which then lets me close my box up and now my lid doesn't move. Again, you could do just two sides, you could do all four sides, you could put it on the inside of the box. It doesn't make a difference as long as you have them. Now my lid doesn't fall off. It's a very important piece. This one little strip is very, very important to this whole process. <laughs> Without it, your lid can, has no way of staying closed. And just slide it on in. and close up your box and you have made this is a lovely size you could put a christmas or a christmas ornament in here you could put a baby shower gift in here you could put a wedding gift in i mean this is a lovely size it's not tiny and it can do so much but me being me i want to take it to the next level let's cut it again i'm going to cut two more I'm not going to be using paper today. I'm going to be using luster wax. But quickly, if you did want to, co to cover it with paper, you absolutely can. The paper will line up with the die exactly. So you would cut your... You would cut your, your mat board with your scoreboard die, and then your paper will line up exactly to it so that you have the opportunity to cover your entire box in paper should you want to. I, I am me and I wanted to do it differently. But to do it with paper, it's not difficult at all. You cut two out of your mat board, you cut two out of the paper you're using, you line it up, use some adhesive tape and put it down. So I'm gonna cut two more. I'm gonna have to open up another pack of mat board. I still have one sheet, I have one sheet left. Because <laughs> I used one sheet to make my little mini, and then I used two sheets to make my box, two more sheets to make another box, and that leaves me my one sheet. So, let's grab my die, and I'm gonna roll it through, and we're just gonna go bing, bang, boom, and we're not gonna we now understand it's a steel rule die. We understand that there's blades in there. We understand that we need to line our paper up at the bottom of the cut edge, not the bottom of the die. We know that if we're using a plus or a pro or a switch, we may have to use a crease pad as our top plate. But with our big shot, Easy peasy with our extended cutting plates. Bring over my machine, 
send it through. It cuts like a dream. It's not difficult to roll through. It's almost like butter. One down. So I've got one. Throw some of my trash away. I don't need these two pieces. Oh, I, oh yeah, that's okay. I'm like, wait, what happened? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> I almost went, wait a minute. Yeah, that's good. Okay, one, two, three, four. I've got my four pieces and let's do it one more time. I might wanna pop this little guy out right here before it gets too full. There we go. Okay, another piece of mat board. I've got my my do not cut plate down there, my my die, my mat, my mat board. It's lined up with the edge. My cut plate and let's send it on through and that will give me two of everything, which is what I need to make a box. This little guy wants to fall out because it's the very end cut. So one, two, three, and now, now I can put these over there. All right, so I've got all my pieces all over again. I've got two of everything ready to start scoring, ready to start making my box. All I have to do is start taping everything down. But what if I wanted to decorate my box without having to use paper? Maybe I don't want to go then and cut two of all my paper and then tape it all down and put it all in place. Maybe I just want to decorate it the way it is. How can I do that? Well, Eileen has 3D embossing folders. This is her first, I think her first really large one. The other 3D embossing folders we have from her are a little bit older. We have five of them. It's a five pack. It retails for $63.95. Your price is $24.99. And I'll show you what the five look like later. But you can see the size difference. This is a standard A6 embossing folder for Sizzix, and this is their new A5 size, much bigger. Oh my goodness, wonderful, love the size. I can always cut something down, easy to do. So I wanna use this embossing folder to add an embossed element to my die. This is mighty thick. So let's take it and let's open up my embossing folder. Hers are indexed, which means that the pattern is on the top. You can see the pattern. The backside doesn't have the printing on it. And that's gonna tell you that that's the top. It also has the Sizzix logo. A little hard to see, but the Sizzix logo will also tell you that this is the top of the embossing folder. So I can take and line my embossing folder up, put my scoreboard, mat board, die cut in the center, if that's where I want, or maybe I want it, maybe I want it more towards the edge. I don't know, I have decisions. I think that's kind of pretty. I'm gonna do it with the I'm gonna do it with the folds down. I think I'm gonna put it there. Now, a 3D embossing folder from Sizzix is already thicker than most, and it already has to be treated differently when you are sending it through your Big Shot machine. So bring over my Big Shot machine, and on the base platform, 
it tells you if it's a 3D embossing folder, it's the base platform, the 3D embossing folder, and one cup plate. And that is how you would send it through normally, assuming you have cardstock in there. Right now, I've got map board and it is super thick. So if I try to put this through my Big Shot machine, okay, so at least it fits there, but that is as far as it will go. I can't force it. It will not go. It will not. It's telling me, Stacy, hold up, girlfriend. It is too thick. But then if I take this off, and I try to run it through without anything, then it says, oh no, too thin. It does nothing. It rolls through and it'll do nothing. It doesn't have enough pressure. Nada, zero. So how am I going to make this work? This is where knowing what you can and can't do with your machine and taking a chance not saying to force anything through your machine, but taking a little opportunity to maybe try some of the other things that work with your machine. Now this, this is a Solo Shim by Sizzix. It comes with your Big Shot machine, and I guess, well, it comes with all of your machines, and it goes right on top of your base platform if I wanted to cut with paper if I wanted to cut my faux postage with paper this would be the sandwich that I would do it is my base platform it is my solo shim it is my cut plate it's my paper it's my die with the ridges facing down and then it is my do not cut plate. And I would send this on through. Ooh, then I might do a rotate just because it has all those holes. I got rolling really fast there for a minute. <laughs> oh, come back, all of you. Come back. <laughs> and it would cut out my cute little faux. Did you see that? <laughs> Wait a minute. Take your tweezers and you go zoop and zoop. <laughs> These are fussy tweezers. The tips are very, very fine. <laughs> Somebody said these were awesome for putting um, decorations on cookies. So you get where I'm going. That's what I would do. Now, if I could want it to, I could come in here and I could cut this. Well, it has a frame, so you could cut it out, but I also could cut this. And make it look like it's got that post that, that, that postage stamp edge and cut this all out. So that is what we typically use this Solo Shim for. You cannot buy the Solo Shim by itself. It's not sold by itself yet. I am working on that. <laughs> that is, a, a, that is a, a goal. A girl has got to have a goal. Look at all these little dots. Oh my gosh. Well, if you need stuff for shaker, hello. <laughs> this is nowhere near going to end up in my trash can, but that's okay. So that is what this little solo shim is for. It comes with your machine and it's meant to be used with wafer style dies to get them to cut. I don't wanna cut a wafer style die. 
I want to emboss. I want to emboss my super thick mat board with my super thick embossing folder, but I can't do it the way it tells me to on my, on my platform because it's just too thick. But what if, what if I took my platform and I took my embossing folder with my mat board and I covered it with this and I sent it through almost like this was my top plate. Hmm. Well, looky here. It's rolling through. Yay. When I tried it without this, I got nothing. But now, hello. I've got embossing. Let's do the next piece. And I'm just going to line it up the same way. Close it up. If I wanted to, I could put this down below and have this on top and just send this straight through. I just need that extra height for it to be able to hit the roller. So now I've just put it on the bottom. And you may prefer to do that. It'll keep it from warping for sure. And again, I'm embossed. First two pieces embossed. I think I'll do these two up here at the top. And close it up. So it's using what comes with your machine in a slightly different way but works perfectly. Otherwise, there is no other way to emboss mat board for your scoreboard dies with a 3D, a Sizzix 3D embossing folder. It just isn't gonna happen. Oh my gosh, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. Holy smokes, artichokes. So I'm going to do all my pieces. I don't know that I need to do the bottom of the box, but I definitely need to at least do the top of my box. And I've put mine down at the bottom just so it keeps it flat and it doesn't warp. I have something sticky on here. Okay, I've got all my pieces and I'm ready to build my box. But you're saying, Stacy. You just told me, and see, mine's eaten up, and it, it, it's fine. <laughs> you just take a scissors, according to Keeper of the Secret Sauce, Kevin, and you just kind of give it a little bit of a haircut when that happens. It's because I didn't line mine up straight, and I sent it through. But Kevin, Keeper of the Secret Sauce, says you just give it a little bit of a haircut, and it's going to be fine. Stacy, my machine didn't come with a solo shim, it came with a multi-purpose platform. And the multi-purpose platform is the one, okay, there's definitely something on here. Oh yeah, like what is so sticky? Tape, <laughs> okay. Multi-purpose platform is the one with the hinges. Does yours have a hinge? Because if it does, you can't take this off to be able to use it with your with your embossing folder. And you're like, okay, then what do I do? Now I can't do this because I don't have the right, the right tool because mine's hinged and they don't sell this yet. Working on it. 
All right, well, let's take, I've got this one over here. Let's take and, so one, two, three, four, five. I don't know that I need to do all the pieces, but I want to show you what to do if you have a platform that is hinged from Sizzix. Now, you may go ouch for a moment, but you have to remember that you're going to use this at some point. I'm going to take two pieces of my mat board. I'm going to cut it to the size of my embossing folder. It's going to leave me a little piece that I can use somewhere down the road. I need to cut one more. I'm going to mark them. Shim for 3D Sizzix embossing and matte board. One of two. Two of two. You're going to need both of them. But these are going to take the place of your solo shim. You're going to be able to do exactly what I was doing. Let's put another one in. This time let's put it towards the top and instead of using that, whoop, do I have it backwards? Instead of using the solo shim to make it go through because what if you don't have it? Well you can buy the mat board and now you've cut two pieces of it and you've put it on top and it's going to take the place of that solo shim. And I'm gonna send it on through and it's gonna roll right on through. I suppose I could put it on the bottom too because I've warped mine a little bit. But when I open it, again, I'm embossed. So let's do another one and this time let's put it towards, let's put them on the bottom so they don't warp. And let's roll it on through. Now eventually those shims are gonna compress down and you won't get as deep of an embossing. But at that point you cover it with paper and you cut it with one of your other scoreboards. You do something with it. It doesn't go to waste. Oh yeah, works perfect. Hello. That's better. Put it on the bottom. <laughs> That's much better. So now I can do one. So if you do not have a solo shim or you do not want to use your solo shim, you can get away with this using two pieces of mat board. Easy roll. Because I don't want to take paper and cover it all up. I want to just make my box 
and get to it. And then I need one of my lids. How easy was this? Where there's a will, there's a way. And it's not going to harm your machine as long as you do not overstuff it. And your machine will tell you, no, that's not the right sandwich. So now I have one completed set with two pieces of mat board and one completed set using my solo shim. But you said, okay, well now what are you going to do with it? Well, I'm going to fold it on its score lines just so I know where they are. And I'm going to bring over my luster wax. So we at Scrapbooking Made Simple have an exclusive on seven colors of luster wax. I've got magenta. I've got blue. I've got turquoise. I've got yellow, not gold. I've got red. I've got purple. And I've got green exclusive to SMS and this is luster wax and it's beautiful. So now that I've taken my embossing and I've embossed my boxes, I can take my luster wax and I can go over the top of it. Now I'm going to try not to get luster wax too much on my tabs because I want my tape to hold and even if I do, I, I remind me to pull the piece back so if you do get it on there, you just have to pull that piece off so that it starts in that with that rough texture. But let's grab some of my luster wax. What color do we want to use? Blue. So luster wax is a true wax based product. Smells like orange oil. These are the original sponges that I've been using since day one. It doesn't go hard and crusty because it's not a water-based product. And then, hello beautiful. Bam! Look at that. Without luster wax, with luster wax. Talk about making the embossing pop. And I didn't have to cut paper and glue paper down. I just took my luster wax and applied. It's got that sheen and that shine and it's dry and I can move on. Talk about quick. So I always start out a little bit light because I can add more. I want to go heavier, I can. It's up to me.
All right, let's do, since I've got this one done, we'll do these as well. We'll do them at the same time. So there and there, no, there and there and there. Okay, and let's see, maybe this time I use a little bit of the magenta and maybe a little bit of teal together. What do you think? Too much? So I used a different part of the embossing folder because you have so many parts to choose from. So a little bit of magenta. And what's the worst that can happen? I don't like it, and then I can come back with luster wax and cover it all up. And then I think I'm going to take a little bit of that magenta. And kind of go into that teal a little bit. And I'm going to take a little bit of that teal. And kind of go into that magenta a little bit. And make a blend. Ooh. Okay, let's do it again. So let's start with my magenta. So I didn't want to use paper. I just wanted to use my embossing folder some luster wax and move along. So now I'm crafting as if I was at home. This is the speed I would be at home. Well, this is my home. <laughs> magenta and work it down. And take a little bit of that teal and work it up. All right, now I think I'm just going to do I think I'll do the lid just in the, I'll just do it in the teal. And look at how it makes that embossing come up. It's crazy good. Mm. 
no effort and it looks amazing and it has that shimmer and it has that shine and look at I made a blend so then my other piece And then the top, and then this one's ready to put together. So do you have a solo shim? Did one come with your machine? Then use it on the bottom. To make magic happen. And then my top. We'll do the top and the teal too, because. Look at that. It dries instantaneously, it gives it a shimmer. And it's so pretty. Okay, that one's ready to build. Let's finish this one too. And maybe I just do this one in all blue since I started in the blue. I'll just do all blue. Love luster wax. It's one of the easiest things to use. It, it does what it says it's gonna do It lasts a long time. If you do 3D printing, you're going to love Luster Wax because it will go over your 3D printing and instantly dry. You use metals, you make jewelry. Luster Wax is your friend. There's one. There's two. And now the only thing I have left to do is the lid and I'm just going to do it in blue because I did everything else in blue. I'm deciding which side I want. I can do the emboss or the deboss. So here's the debossed side. Here's the embossed side. And then you have to decide which side you like better. Emboss side, deboss side, emboss side, deboss side. You have to decide which side you like better. Okay, they're ready to put together. So let's start with the box. I want my frames 
facing up. So I can see the frames. I'm going to pull off that top piece and pull off that top piece just so I don't forget this time. And I'm going to pull off that top piece. You don't have to. It just gives the tape a little something hardier to, to hold on to. Score and score. So frames facing up, mitered edges make my, my make my box. Tape. You get into the rhythm and the roll of doing this, and they go so fast. Pull my liner off. Pull my liner off. Line up edge to edge, so non-tabbed edge to a tabbed edge. And look at how good I did with my, look at how good I did with my embossing. <laughs> Got it almost in the exact same area. And then line my Tabbed edge up with my non-tabbed edge. And look at that. I'm halfway to home. Let's do these. And this is the exact same thing, only smaller. It's just a little narrower because it's the lid. So I want to see my frames facing me. I want to see the tops of these facing me because that's how this gets put together. If you don't have all four of those frames facing you, it will not put together properly. Mitered edge to mitered edge. Bam. Oh, Stacy, thank you. See, my tape wasn't sticking down really well. So I'll pull that off, add my tape. Pull this off, add my tape. I think you should almost go ahead and pull those off before you start taping anything and just do all of them. So. Did I pull it off yet? Nope. Come on. Nope, I've pulled too much. I'm going to put another piece down. There we go. So line them up, press it down. I've got my first corner made. Line it up. I've got my second corner made. Now all I have to do is my lid and my bottom. I'm going to add a little bit of luster wax all the way around. Just a little bit.
We'll see if my tape will hold it. Just so when I put my lid on, any white space will be gone. Now once my tape is down, it'll stick. It's getting that liner off. Oh yeah, see, covers up all the white edges. Now let's see if I can get it done. Tape all the way around. So embossing mat board with a 3D embossing folder. If you're an Eileen Hall fan and you've been working with her products for years, you may have already figured out how to get that done. But if you are brand new, it's not, it's not the most, it's not the first thing you think of. <laughs> you put it through and you say, oh, it doesn't fit and you stop. But I know that there's more options out there. So can I get it out? Just getting that liner. See, I'm going to struggle. Should have just gone ahead and taken off that first top layer. Oh, there we go. Once it's down, it's down. It's getting that liner off with the... There's one. Let's see if I press it down really good. Oh, that one came out for easy. Okay. Let's hear it for that. Yay. And let's push this one down really good. Okay. Well, maybe that's the trick. Maybe I just need to press it down really good so it's really against the mat board. Because once it's there, it's there. There we go. Fold that one back into itself. Put them all down. Grab my lid. And let's close her on up. Whoa. <laughs> I need to do my bottom. Come on. Well, these don't want to come off, so I'm just going to go for it with it. One. three and four 
And let's just close her on up. into itself. Press down really good. Oh yeah, that worked great. That one's great. Woohoo. Press down really good. <laughs> oh, and that one was great. That was really good. <laughs> Pressed down really good. What do you think we, you think we're gonna get it or you think it's gonna give me trouble? Ah, I talked too soon. There we go. All right, so I'm good. I've got all four done. I've got my bottom of my box, which I didn't do anything with. I just left it plain. Now I'm just going to close up. Close up my box. Now my lid is the exact same size. Remember, the exact same size. So I need to take either two or four of these and just put them on the inside. Only do half of the die cut, leave half without any tape on it. Fold it back onto itself, put it on the inside of the lid with the part that doesn't have tape coming out. So you've created a little extra lip right there. right there so that when I close my box up my lid doesn't come off and now I can decorate and I still have my blue one to do I won't do my blue one but I could <laughs> so it really is all about my my cute little my cute little mini I could put my cute little mini in here. And depending on whether I have a solo shim that came with my machine or I don't and I use two pieces of mat board. Now eventually these will compress down and you'll have to replace them but at that time you're going to cover these with paper and you're going to die cut them and use them for something. It is a zero waste game here. So if I put those down, well let's just assume that I've got my solo shim. I put my solo shim down. I put my embossing folder on top. No other plates and I send it on through. Now I've got it all embossed and ready to go.
how pretty is that versus nothing. And I didn't have to use any paper. I like that I didn't have to use any paper. I just wanted to get right to it. The luster wax dries instantaneously. The colors are magical. The seven colors that I have today, they are exclusive here. Do I dare mix a little bit? Be bold, Stacy. A little bit of yellow. And I could just go until my heart's content. I like it. And then I can put my paper in. I could do the inside and have the whole thing done. Now I've got the inside and the outside ready to go. Put my little, put my little strap on, my little label and my little, I could do that up in the luster wax. that on and my little label and then fill it with paper so cute today it is all about scoreboard dies scoreboard dies and mat board my guess is that this will not stick down but I will try Well, let's just give it a whirl. Then I could take some grommets or some brads, pull the tines off and glue them in place. Or I could put it through the whole thing. Could put bling on those holes. Yeah, it's holding well. Okay. Okay. I loved using the embossing folder directly on the mat board. It's not something you see often. Eileen does beautiful, beautiful embossing folders. The mat board is thick and rich and lush and any steel rule die can cut it but her scoreboards were made for it. And now you put your paper in, get a little string, wrap your page, you know, put your pages in, put your string in, put your, and glue it down, and you are good to go. 
Scoreboard dies are different than any other die that Sizzix makes. Yes, they make other steel rule dies, yes. But Eileen always has an intent behind what she does. She takes something that starts out so plain, but she engineers it so that it's so simple for you to put together. And then she gives you all of the tools to make it something spectacular. Even knowing how to make sure that the lid doesn't come off, scoreboard dies have that opportunity to build a three-dimensional element or a, a book, a mini album. She has these cute little, it, it's almost like a, a sewing kit that's darling. And she's the only one at Sizzix that does this. Kudos to her. And then figuring out how to make her 3D embossing folder work with her mat board is just yummy when you add that luster wax in. Holy smokes artichokes. So, love the embossing, loved everything about what we did today. Let me show you the bundles because I have got so many samples for you. It is, it, it's almost overwhelming. I, I will not be able to name, I'm just gonna show everybody. And, and if I show yours and I don't call, I'm not gonna call anybody's names. It's just, it's too much. <laughs> There's too many. Okay, her first, the first bundle I have for you, I said one bundle would be at $24.99 and it is. Regular price is $63.95. This is five of her older, smaller 3D embossing folders. So they retail between $11.99 and $12.99 each, and you're getting all of them for $24.99. And there's not, there, I love the buttons. There's not a bad one in the bunch. Love all of them. Limited in how many we have. This would be a great gift if you need to get things for your crafty friends. Five for 25 bucks, that's $5 each. Well, they retail for at least $11.99 or more. So you're getting a, a deal. And they don't have to know you got a deal. That's bundle number one. Bundle number two is also some of her older product. It is a scoreboard die and a, a thinlet die. So retail is $70.98. Your price is $34.99. So a little bit older, but if you don't have any Eileen Hall, well, this is a great way to get started. So you've got the companion, the companion to this one. If you have both, now you've got it all. This one, the new one, has got the fun little shapes and the ovals and the triangles and this one is just, just postage all the way around, but you could have both of them. And then she has another box and this box is put together completely differently. Every bit is easy, but it has the cute little scallop on the front. And this, so a little bit older from Eileen, every bit is good. But instead of $70.98, it's $34.99 for these two items. So you've got the, the bundle of the embossing folders and now this bundle. Are these also open stock? Yes, but the price is going to be much better on the bundle. That's always where you're going to find the deepest discount. And then all of her new product. The new little mini book, so cute. Her new faux postage stamp. Her new extra large 3D embossing folder that I was using today. A packet of her mat board. Her box that I made today. And 
the XL cutting plates to go through your Big Shot, your Big Kick, your Vagabond, your Pro, your Plus, your Switch, your whatever machine you've got, these are going to go through. It retails for $158.94. Your price is $109.99. That is such a good deal. <laughs> Eileen's going, oh, I think I'll take one of my own bundles. <laughs> Truly, the nicest person you will ever meet. Had I known what I was missing out on all these years, I would have been sure to say, Hey, Eileen, I'm Stacy. Let's go hang out a little bit. But we never, we never were quite in the same circle before. But we are now, and I'm so grateful. So three bundles. Everything's open stock. You can absolutely just get one item if that's what makes your heart happy. And now... Now for the samples, and it is a lot, and they are beautiful. So I'm going to start with cards. Here is that, that faux postage. I think this is the original one. I think that's the original faux postage. Beautiful with the embossing folder. So they use the embossing folder. So lovely. Really just lovely. <laughs> you guys need to, their names are on the, I'm not reading names. Look at this. Again, with the faux, the faux postage and the embossing folder. And this is using did they use this they sure did look at that they made instead of oh how clever are they instead of scoring it down the center they scored it down the center and made a card base out of it as opposed to a mini album very smart hello you because they do give you that option I can't do it on this one because I got my little piece there but how smart are you? Here we've got the really cool faux, totally different look. The faux postage, it's beautiful. These were all done by different makers all around the world. There's the embossing folder. If you're watching you can say that one's mine <laughs> if you're during the live chat say that one's mine and we'll all say oh my gosh it was fabulous here you have the embossing folder again and here you have the faux postage stamp what a difference same die totally different looks fabulous the faux postage, I just love this one. <laughs> and I know who made it and I love her too. <laughs> I think this is so darling. And look at this. You've got the embossing folder and then they made a shaker. You're not old your vintage the embossing folder the faux postage is this darling and then here that die is so flipping cute and then here totally different they took all the little postages out how clever okay i'm gonna look at the backs of some of these so i can yeah I'll, i'm gonna look look at i love them i love them all embossing folder Ooh, holy smokes artichokes is that supposed to tell me? Oh, I hope, I don't know if this is who it is. 
I can't tell, but it's fabulous. A lot of the little tabbies came off. But I'll see if I can figure out who some of these are. Oh, this is beautiful. That way. I don't know. Told you I have a ton of samples. And every one of them is amazing all on its own right. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's just awesome. Look at this with pattern paper. And this one is beautiful. With the embossing folder. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, and this one's beautiful. Oh my gosh. And then here, and it's beautiful. I don't know if these are, I don't know whose names are who. All right, so Britt Bass has done several of these, and Zelda, Zelda has done several of these. There's another Zelda, and Maggie, Maggie. Oh, Maggie, I, I, I can't, I can't tell. Maggie Harding, Maggie Harding has done several of these. This might be Amy Powers, but I'm not 100% positive. Hello, Amy. Um, I don't know who made this one. The tag is missing, so I can't tell you. And I don't know who made this one. The tag is missing. I can't tell you, nor can I tell you this one. Um, this one might be Sue Eldred, Eldred, uh, Sue Eldred, but I can't be sure because the little posty notes are kind of all over the place. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Eldred, so that might be Sue as well. And nope, nobody, I don't know. Um, this is uh, Brenda DeLoyer. Oh, Brenda, this is great. I, I love it, love it, love it, love it. And this is again a Zelda. And here we have uh, Brenda DeLoyer. Again, love all of them. This one's fabulous. This is a Brenda DeLoyer as well. You're not old, you're vintage. Okay, I don't feel so bad. I was feeling guilty that I wasn't telling you their names, but I've got more samples for you. I've got the boxes still to do. This one was done by Britt. Britt Bass. <laughs> Unfortunately, her name is upside down. <laughs> no, I have no name. I have no idea who did this one. And this one is a Zelda. Pretty. And the super smart one was Elena. My Elena. Elena, I love it. That's my Elena. <laughs> and Kelly, Kelly Perez. Well done, Kelly. And Tanya Brooks. Okay, Tanya, love this. So stinking cute. And this one, I have no idea. And this one is a Zelda. And then the ones I showed in the beginning, and then we'll move on. Nobody, I have no clue because it has no name on the back of it. Oh, this is Mila. Is it Mela? Mela? I love this, Mela. It's beautiful. And then this one I showed also, this is a... Kelly Perez. So pretty. Now, let's talk about the little mini books. Darling, right? Have no idea who made it, but it's stinking cute. Look at this one. So happy. Oh my gosh, it's done with fabric and felt. Okay, darling, no idea who did it, but you did a great job. And here, look at the shimmer. Ooh, pretty, pretty. Oh, this is Mila. Thank you for putting your name in it. Love it. 
Ooh, this one is Tanya Brooks. Wow, this is gorgeous. This feels, this feels amazing. And then all the pages. Wow, beautiful. It feels so good. And then I showed you this one earlier. Um, wait, there might be a name here. Um, hand sewn, wait, Zelda. Hello, Zelda. I love this one. This is so cute. Love the little pages. Well done. And then the little ribbon to tie it all together. Your little, your little brads there. Pretty Zen colors. And then here we have Holy Smokes. And I, oh, wait a minute. Wait. Up, oh, Kelly Perez. Okay. <laughs> wow, this one is fab. I, I am so sorry to open it, Kelly, but I have to. We have to see what's inside. <gasps> oh my, even the, look at, isn't that beautiful? And they're all distressed and aged and, oh, stunning. Beautiful work. Beautiful work by everybody. But I'm not done. No, I have the boxes. This one was done by, by Britt. So Britt, and she, I showed this one in the beginning, and she put all the little mini Look at the little mini albums all tucked inside here. Britt, I love you for this. This is beautiful. This, when I saw the colors and I saw this, it made my heart just go pitter patter. And you said that we could give this to somebody and I am. Oh, you're gonna make me cry. I am gonna give this to somebody. Somebody who really can use it and really wants it. They don't know they want it yet, but when they see it, they're going to love it, and I appreciate you allowing me to pass this on to make somebody's heart so happy. Oh, I didn't mean to tear up. I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, shake it off. Okay. <laughs> Wait, let's get to some of the other boxes. Oh, my gosh, look at this. Is this fabulous? Amazing. Pam, oh, Pam Bray, oh my gosh. Pam, how are you? I had no idea this was, oh my gosh, I'm just a blubbering little. <laughs> oh, Pam, it's beautiful. I hope everything is well with you and just continued success and you make beautiful things and thank you oh my gosh <laughs> between Pam and Britt and it's just that little art box is gonna go to somebody who who's gonna appreciate it they really need it right now and so and then to open this up and to see Pam's name it's like oh it just makes my heart happy it fills me with joy <laughs> Okay, I have to continue. I have other things to show you. <laughs> All right, back to work. <laughs> Ooh, we match. <laughs> okay, beautiful. Look at, I love the little flower on top, the little pom-pom. Mila, Mila, this is stunning. Love it. See, and she put it around all four sides. She's she did a better job than I did, but it keeps that lid right on. Pretty. Okay, and Pam's over there. And then, oh, hello, gorgeous. Oh my gosh, is this fun? And it was done with strips of paper and the flowers, the rolled flowers. What is in, oh my gosh, and the inside, who did this? Teresta, oh, please forgive me. Teresta Arvillo, oh my gosh, this is amazing. Look at, it's all done. And then you've got this beautiful, beautiful ribbon on the inside, wow. Okay, I told you these were beyond what I could ever even imagine. And I haven't opened them up, obviously. I wanted to be as surprised as you. Wow. 
These are just absolutely stunning, breathtaking. Now, I don't know if this one has, let's see, this one is by Maggie. Oh, this is the one I'm having trouble reading because it's small. Maggie. Oh, Maggie. Harding. Harding. Maggie Harding. Okay, Maggie, I'm dyslexic too. So between my eyes going as I'm getting older and me being dyslexic, Maggie Harding. It's stunning, Maggie. Who wouldn't want to get a lovely wedding gift in this or a bridal shower gift in this or an anniversary gift in this? It's stunning. Okay, this one's got stuff in it. <laughs> Look at the colors. Look at the little feet. Uh-oh. I wonder if I was not supposed to turn it upside down. Brenda DeLoyer, was I not supposed to turn it upside down? Love the little icons. Oh no! You do you. Oh my gosh. They're just amazing. All of you. The effort and the time that you put into making these is stunning. And it is not lost on me. It's not lost on any of us who are watching this, seeing these samples. It's breathtaking. And you did it all with Eileen Hall's dyes, which make my heart so happy because she has, she's earned this. She's earned her place. I have such respect for her. Oh, just for you. Wait, wait, wait. And then look at it's all done. H A P P Y. <laughs> it spells happy birthday. This is just darling. Give me an H. Give me an A. Give me a P. Give me another P. <laughs> just for you. And again, this is all Brenda DeLoyer. Brenda, it's stunning. I, it's stunning. I am in awe of the work that all of you makers have done. I was so pleased. <laughs> I was so pleased with my little box. <laughs> and then I started looking in your little boxes. Holy smokes, artichokes. You girls know how to bring it. Wow. <laughs> and then, okay, are you ready? Could it be any cuter? Could it be any cuter? <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find out who made this. Could it be? Oh, there we go. Sarah Lizzie Dodd. Hello, Sarah Lizzie Dodd. Could it be any cuter? And then, it, did Eileen make this? I don't know. It says it needs to go back. <laughs> That's what the blue dots mean. You don't get to keep them. I'm not even going to, I'm not going to open it. It's beautiful. But the bunny, the bunny takes the cake. Well, the bunny takes the eggs. And look at the little handle and the flowers. Oh my gosh. So darling. And then I've got this blue one. Now we didn't get to show everything. So this is with the embossing folder and it's been inked in white. Look at the color. Look at the color. So it looks like they've used a very deep blue paper and then a white pigment based ink to, to bring up that embossing and then some lace over the top. It's stunning. Nobody's name. Oh, there we go. Created by Zelda. Hello, Zelda. Enjoy the choices. I am enjoying the choices. I really am. And it's got her. Zelda, you're not getting the candy back. <laughs> I've got Hershey's in here. Honey, these are not making it home to you. Now, they may have been in this box for a, a week or two, but it can't be bad, right? Chocolate never really goes bad, does it? Love it. Oh. 
I am, I am so taken back with all the effort. It's just so much. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. And look at the beautiful box and the beautiful bow on top. And this is Tanya Brooks. Hello, Tanya. How are you? I love them. I just don't know why I'm getting so emotional. <laughs> and then we have a layout. And SMS girl Elena made the layout for you. She used she used the the die that makes the the little mini album. She used part of the box to make the pockets. She used the uh, the die that has the postage. And Elena put together an album for you using Eileen Hull's Steel Rule Scoreboard Dies and her coordinating product to go with. Elena, it's beautiful. So, again, I'm not exactly sure why I'm getting so emotional, but I think just the overall, the overall beauty and the effort and the care that was taken and the joy that was put into them and the joy that they brought me to all of you makers out there that contributed. Thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share a little piece of you. And to Eileen, I'm so glad to be your friend. <laughs> we should have been friends 10 years ago. <laughs> but better late than ever. And I am so honored to have your collection here with me now. You have done an amazing job and you should be so proud. All right, you guys, it's me, Stacy. Scrapbooking Made Simple, scrapbookingmadesimple.com. I just want to sit here and look at all of this all day long, but it's midnight and I have to go home now. So, you can find all of this product online at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. Look under our YouTube Yummies category. You can come into our retail store. We are a true mom and pop brick and mortar retail store. And if you come to see us, you'll see there's like five of us. <laughs> there's Claire and there's Elena downstairs. Renee is down to just one day a week. Zoe's new, she's working three days a week. Then my sons are here. So we are a true mom and pop store and we would be honored to have you come visit us Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Yes, we are closed on the weekends because we just don't have the staff to cover. But Monday through Friday, we're here with a big old smile on our face or visit us online at scrapbookingmadesimple.com. All right, you guys, it has been a wonderful class. It has brought joy to my heart, and I am so glad that I get to do this every week with all of you. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Until Monday for our next Make It Monday event, also featuring Sizzix, Holy Smokes Artichokes. Wait till you see that 1999 bundle. I will see you Monday afternoon, 5 p.m. sunny California time, 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, when we live chat during our next Make It Monday event. And then on Tuesday, it's our next Take Two Tuesday event where I put my Stacy Sizzix hat on and my I, I show you a wonderful, fun, easy class using my new products from Sizzix that uh, release on March 1st. So, okay, you guys, I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna go download this up and I will see you later. Have a wonderful weekend and big hugs. Bye, everybody.